Okay. Hi, friends. Uh, what does a what does an Australian say when you ask him whether he's done his taxes? No, I'll Uh, um, welcome back to Hardcore Wow. And looky, look here. Slice and dice. Level 60 rogue. Could you believe that? Look at the gear. Man. Sandalar Madcap's mantle. mantle. Alright. So that's... Yeah, that that's that's uh, Sulgoro. Jesus, that's impressive, man. Now, I know you have your concerns for me, and I uh, appreciate that. But I'm telling you, I can do it too. I know you don't believe me. I'm gonna prove you wrong. Mm, we are going to. Uh, no, no, we are going to do these, Gore Tusk Liver, we're going to Westfall, that's what I'm getting at, we're going to Westfall, we're going to level up, this is a hunter, I don't expect any miracles, uh, channel has been at a standstill, um, but, um, yeah, I'm sorry to say, but retail just doesn't do it for me. Uh, so I wanted to have a different adventure, and I figured, you know, why not hardcore? Uh, life is good, in case you care. Um, you know, um, I'm feeling refreshed. And I'm also feeling rather happy, because, guys, it's autumn almost. You know what that means? That means rainy days while playing WoW. Yeah, I know. This is what we're doing it for, fellers. And so... I'm just going to see if I can make it. I've never been level 13 on Hardcore. Never. So, I'm not sure if I'm going to make it. But I think I will. It's just that the Hunter is not my go-to class. So I think if this fella dies, I'm going to go and roll a Paladin, probably. But, you know, I've never been level 13, so... I, I mean, is that true? Yeah, that is true. The last time I did these... Was way it was I think it was two years ago and it was level twelve then. Hey, Darken Fair is out. Let's see what's going on here. Hey, Bert. He does look like Bert Kreicher. Uh Need help? Let me browse your goods. Yeah, you get nothing. Light bless you. This is shit. <laughs> I wonder how I got all these quests. I, I honestly don't remember. But it does sort of show me that I just have to kill everything. Harvest Watchers, those are at the start of this. So... Nice tune. So yeah, you know, this channel was about 
mingling in WoW with life and, you know, in general, um, gaming habits. And uh, I actually found a cool way, because there's this whole trend of millennials that play video games getting into health. Uh, I did that as well uh, with this little channel. You know, trying to combine shit. And um, I've actually gotten into working out when I wake up. Well, not working out, exercising. So I just do 50 reps of my favorite exercises and then I'm done. Uh, I'm gonna try and do that in sets of five, but for now I'm just enjoying the fact that I wake up and I do those things. Because it feels good, honestly. I just, I wake up at six every day and I drink coffee, I read, and now I used to drink two coffee whilst reading, and now I drink one coffee and then I take another coffee, but during the second coffee I work out. So that works. Out. <clears throat> uh... Hey, what's going on over here? Ah, fucking. Alright, we enter Westfall. Last time I died on level 12, I went to the wetlands. Big mistake. King's Honor, friend. King's Honor pal. Hmm, it looks a little bit too good. I don't like that. Yes, that's how it's supposed to look. Handful of O's. Still think these are the guys we need. Oh, where's my animal? Uh... There we go. Oh shit, he's hungry. Um... Feed pad. That should do it. Hey, how about you do something, you filthy cur? Jesus. Stamina reduced. What the fuck? Oh yeah, I remember. This is that that stupid watch, the pocket watch. Yeah. Oh, cheers. Mage 21 looking for group death mines. Bro, oh, can you imagine going through the death mines? I just don't remember when I picked up all these fucking quests. I genuinely don't remember.
Ah! Okay, so they do need to be slain. Right. Well, we've got work on our hands then. It's a warrior over there. I'm not too fond of Westfall, except for the fact that it's just really good leveling. I hate Hunter. I hope he dies. No. something uh, personal to tell you. I was um, working with some um, youngsters and uh, they were looking at some presentation about diversity sensitive backgrounds, where which is a program where essentially kids meet other kids from different cultural backgrounds that they wouldn't otherwise encounter. And I, I sort of had to... Uh, someone else did the presentation, I just had to sit with kids. And uh, at first I thought, well, nobody's gonna do this, because we're all tired of the woke shit. Um, and then I looked at the um, sign-ins, and there were actually six kids that signed up. And I actually felt that a little bit, because, I mean, here we are, sort of condemning people that fuck up Star Wars and sort of force their way into ideologies and, you know, it, it will never solve itself. And then you have these kids who just are like open-minded and are like, yeah, I want to meet other kids from different backgrounds. Really fucking interesting. And I kind of hate myself for not thinking it will be cool. So, yeah. Anyway, I, I don't want to deal with politics in these videos. But that one, I was like, ah, shit. Maybe, maybe we can just be a little more civilized or something. Oh. The friendly. Oh shit.
Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right, he's, he's gone. All right, good. Now you. It's the concussive shot that I want. Dude, you have to attack the thing! God! Ah! What am I doing? I'm so dumb. Fucking just you. Jesus! Uh, and someone is lolling me. God damn it. How are you doing, Sam Sulek? Let it come. Okay. Let's start again. Hmm. I love the fact that there are only four races in Classic. That's really cool. You know what? I could fucking pull off a rogue, actually. I don't like them that much. I like Paladin. I'm gonna go for a Paladin. I think it also has certainly some, uh, you know, you can attain more uh, success that way. I can't believe someone lolled at my death. Disconnect. Reconnect. Yo! You know what? Yes, let's blow up some steam. Let's kill Horde. Because this is my fucking jam character. You've been here before, guys. This was the guy... Where it all started. Where my channel actually grew into something formidable and fun. Nah, I don't want to kill Horde. We're going to make a character. I don't want to be a cheapskate. Hardcore. Yeah, I know. Death is permanent. Thank you. Oh, wait. I think I'm... Oh, yeah, that was it. I was updating a game. It's... Alright, there we go. Ooh. This looks pretty sharp. Uh, let's make... Let's give him my hairstyle. So let's... There we go. Seriously, if I grow my hair, it will look like this. Let's just do it like that. Sort of a wise paladin. Such an ugly game. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. This is fine. No! We embrace our boldness. Right, this is essentially what I look like if I would work out. Self found. Can't trade with other players, can't say mail. Alright, so you can't do shit. 
Fine. And his name shall be Marcus Knotar. Knotar. Yes. The noble humans of Stormwind are a proud, tenacious race. Though the recent invasion of the demonic Burning Legion decimated their sister kingdom of Lordaeron, the defenders of Stormwind stand vigilant against any who would threaten the sanctity of their lands. Nestled in the foothills of Elwyn Forest, Stormwind City is one of the last bastions of human power in the world. Bird. Ruled by the Child King, Anduin Rin, the people of Stormwind remain steadfast in their commitment to the Grand Alliance. Backed by their stalwart allies, the armies of Stormwind have been called away to fight the savage horde on distant battlefields. With the armies gone, the defense of Stormwind now falls to its proud citizens. You must defend the kingdom against the foul mongrels that encroach upon it and hunt down the subversive traitors who seek to destroy it from within. Now is the time for heroes. Now humanity's greatest chapter can be told. Okay. We're ready. Ooh, lots of people trying. Good day to you. See you later. What can I do for you? Be careful, or the Alliance. Go with honor, friend. Sure. Let's do that. Belts, I reckon. How are you? Safe travels. the idea of leveling a hardcore paladin. So when I um, did the workout in the morning, uh, I immediately went to my lit RPG. Did I put that in the description? I don't, I don't even know. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, and it's going quite well, because I'm essentially rewriting my whole D&D campaign. So, if you ever feel like you want to express something, or you want to create a story, maybe try and look for stories you've already written down, so that you know, kind of know the plot. Uh, and yeah, sort of spice that up. Oh, I don't have to do that. Oh man, this is cozy as fuck. Alright. Do not take candle. Blink. Oh shit, I'm not paying attention. Fuck me. God. AFK heaven. Oh. 
that seemed like a critical almost. I dinged. Wait. I want to have the spell that smites them. This does not count as Cobalt Vermin. Odd. Zaza Ding! Oh, there we go. A little shit. You are a pest on the hills of Elwyn. Be gone, fiend. Yeah, that was good. So I played Space Marine 2. Fucking amazing game, guys. Um, what was cool about it was it was a love letter to sort of 2009 Uncharted 2 times. Where a game was allowed to be six hours in length, as long as it was cinematic. It's a fucking great game, and I missed these types of games, and I'm happy I paid full price for it. I want to play it again in a moment, although there's some issue with my Steam, where it says that uh, my discs are fucked. Like, the, my PC discs, and those things in my bag. Uh -oh. But yeah, I thought, you know, I've got some time to kill, I don't want to think. But you kind of have to think with WoW Hardcore. You kind of you gotta stay on your toes. Look at that! That was good damage. Oh, yeah, bitch. Wham bam shall blam. I watched um, The Departed the other day. Good film. Good fucking film. Reminds me of a certain scene now that I'm here. I got this rat. This cheese snowing fucking rat. And it brings up question. And I was thinking about the Boston accent. Which is sort of like... They don't say the departed, they say the departed. And it's probably because... They are Irish. And the Irish are weird with their R's. Sort of... It's not a tree, it's a tree. And so, if you say that in every word, you don't say... Departed. In Irish, you would say, Departed. Uh, Dragonborn Hardcore Lords. Sure. Is some, like, run guild? Or is there actually a soul out there? Soul behind it. Ah, right, sorry. That was a bit... Blunt at me.
I'm such a bastard. I was like, immediately I'm like, eh, it didn't start a butt run guild. I hate myself online. I should be more friendly. This is kind of relaxing. Um, I'll be putting up my D&D episodes in the background. Uh, because I can see that this is going to be my new thing now. It already grasped me. And I tried to do it with Elden Ring videos. I might continue to do that. But maybe this is a little bit more... Uh... Yeah, I don't know. Feel like we've uh, set a culture here of casual fantasy nerds that love World of Warcraft. And now it's your turn, young Wolfie. I was kind of thinking, what if there's an MMO that is actually sort of produced out of a custom campaign? So, like, you play Warhammer, Total, like, Total War, Warhammer 3, and the outcome of your custom campaign actually decides quest design. You could definitely do that with AI. Like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see that game, and I will make that game. I, uh... I have no knowledge of game mechanics or game development, but, uh, with enough dough, I can make it work. Trust me. I'll be the creative director. That's something I want to become, I guess. I don't know how to, though. I don't know how one becomes that, and sustainable in terms of money. It's also kind of scary. I don't want to get fired. Oh. Has to be quick with wearing the armor. Look. I'm cool. Yo! What can I do for you? I'm gonna get the around. bitches out there. And for some reason I'm skipping up on the vermin, so I'll just do a roundabout. Explosive hardcore. Bit of a shitty name. Okay, the device are here. Take them on. Hello there. Whoa, someone became level 60. You're next, bitch. Maybe I actually have... A D and D episode already here. I think I do. Let me uh... careful, careful. Let me pop on the tune real quick. Hold up. Mm, where could it be? I'm trying to look for. I think this is it. 
Yeah, how it got it. Right. 28, I believe, on the hit. So. Uh, 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 uh. Sure. Um, then I'm continuing the turn. So, Corin, even though you defeated Morneth and you fried his brain, which part of it has now uploaded to your being, essentially, through your, your cage, um, you still see remnants of the man within these marionette soldiers, and high up the sky, as you see the Lodestar looming. You know that part of you resides in the Lodestar, but also part of him. What do you do as you face these marionette soldiers in front of you? If you're talking, we well, can't hear you. Oops. Um, in the interest of preserving not only my life, but the life of the scaly dragon boy next to me, I will first spend a resolve point and just do a little, a little flashy teleport there. That my line of sight can see. I'm just gonna go right up on top of this here. Nice. Um, these marionettes seem to be particularly bladed, as in melee. Yes. Yeah. And I'm going to just uh, motion to Rogar, like, uh, don't move, and perhaps quickly uh, send Tiam out of way. And I'm not going to wait for him. Or no, I will, I will, never mind. After that, I'm going to wait before I do that thing. Uh, I'm readying an action to cast a spell, and instead of telling him to send Tiamat away, I amend what I said. I, like, grab Tiamat. Like, grab her. Real quick. You're gonna have to tank a few hits, though. Um. That's what I do. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Yeah, this, this, this is gonna hurt. I mean,. Now, oh, bear in mind, you've been, uh, you, uh, you have been better quite a bit, so any solution? Yeah. Uh, how uh, how oh. much meat have they shaved off of you already? Well, uh, they have just started to slice on the meat. <laughs> if you catch my drift. Yeah. But so in far, that, it, it, yeah, th there's still yeah. a bit left. In that case, yeah, uh, I'm just going to tell you to send Tia away. And I will cast the spell on you, Resilient Sphere. So there's a little dome of force around you. So, uh, I mean, I guess you, you get the chance to make a reflex save to avoid my, uh, my spell, if you so choose. Let's see here, I'm uh, reading up the spell. Oh, here, let me, uh... Throw up a wall of force because uh, the resilient sphere acts as a ten foot dome, like a wall of force dome. All right. Well, I mean, Corrin is trying to protect Roger with the spell, so I guess he's not trying to avoid it. Yeah. Uh. So we're essentially building dome. a wall around him now, 
right? Yeah, he's got a, a force field, basically, yeah. but but like an actual one. Yeah. Um, then I am going to activate my communicator, and I say, Destry, this is Corin. I currently have the Geldor personality core active. I apologize for the pomp and circumstance in my voice. However, I was bored and followed Rogar into the woods with a bunch of the students to supposedly get us one step closer to entering the academy. And it seems Rogar has bitten off a bit more than he can chew, which is substantial given his size. What I'm trying to say is we need a increase in firepower as he is getting chopped to bits currently by some wooden automatons. I'm doing my best, but uh, the Geldor personality is a bit uh, scatterbrained, you could say. The other two auxiliary personalities are running background research at the moment. Oh, they cannot be reached. No matter how much you may want to speak to someone a little more rational. Well, what's your current location? I'll somehow try to get there, I guess. Sending now. And I, you know, just I, I drop a little iPhone ping, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tricorder yeah, thingy. Uh, the, the rough coordinates, and you know, we have enough tech on us still that should be able to throw a GPS tag real quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and on your uh, on your comm device, Destry, you note that there are some GPS locations, and they basically point you towards a valley up north. And because of your training, you kind of know that this is either going to be a long walk, or there are some other options that I will elucidate when your turn is up. Cor I love the fact that I used elucidate so smoothly. Because English is my second language. You know, I'm from uh, the Netherlands. And uh, every time someone says something really cool, just like that, I'm impressed, and I fucking nailed that word. Just had to uh, tell you us. Hey, this is going quite well. Uh, I'm having fun. Um, and, you know, these episodes, I think we just... Uh, I tried Elden Ring, it didn't really catch on. Um... I think, and I do, I do like the idea of getting views for my work on World of Warcraft. People seem to jive well on my, well, maybe just the nostalgia that this one evokes. Um, so I'll probably just stick around playing this. I like hardcore as well. I like the Paladin. I think we've got a cool character ahead of us. So yeah, this is going to be fun. Let's level up. See you later. Oh, come on. Yeah, we're going for two-handed. Safe travels. Who's Have that? See you around. Northshire Abbey. All right. Have a good one. I'll do those two then. Greetings. For the Alliance. Go with honor, friend. Be careful. Life bless you. The Alliance. Light bless you. Oh, okay. Well met. Go with honor, friend. Be careful. For the Alliance. What do I do? Ah. Brother Samuel, where art thou? Where art thou? Yo. Yeah. Be careful, 
Go with honor, friend. I read your stupid letter. Life be with you. Yeah, I want that one. And I want everything else, of course, but that one is the most important. Let's put judgment on that one and you go there. Or, like... Let's, let's kill Garrick. Some cobalt workers. And who is Millie? Oh, yeah. Let's go to Millie real quick. And anyone invite me to dice? Balkan Eisenstrider. Bit of a you need pompous something? name, but okay. See you later. And now where is where is Millie? Is she over here? No? No? Am I just dumb? Cards. We're looking for cards. These are the cards. Are there any other cards? Ah! There's a card over there. Millie Osborne. Hey, lady. Ah! Yes. Overalls with a purple sweater. With short hair. Bare feet. Jesus. You look like one of them Jedi outcast riders. You need something? Safe travels. See you later. What was it called? Jedi Outcast? Acolyte. That was it. The Acolyte. Or change. Fucking massacre over here. There we go. I need to get closer. Why not? Ah. Ah, okay. Interesting. You need to have this one active. You need to have a seal active in order to use judgment. Back. I'm out of range. Hey! That was mine! Too far away. 
might still return. Whoa, half of its HP just goes. Raggedy pants. They're way better. Oh, look at how fashionable I look. I'm out of range. Inventory is full. Oh god, this again. Take the candle. I yes, I can. Let's continue the episode. As you stand atop the uh, sequence factory, you hear the stones hitting the outer tube. And once more, out of you, spirits walk. But this time, it's not the lady that you've seen all your life. In fact, it's three entities. You cannot really deduce, but they are cheering and they're saying something like, Oh boy, now this is the essence of purpose. This is fun, I like this Geldor take. And then they disappear again. Mm. Is that your turn, Geldor slash Corrin? Uh, that will... will do it. The marionette soldier looks up at Tiamat and strikes. Not my girl. Yeah, man. And uh, hitting her at 42. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a hit. That is going to be 37 slashing damage on her. All right. Um, just for my imagination, the force field is around Rogar right now, right? Yeah, he's he's encased within the dome. Right. He basically takes up like most of the you know space. It's like his size. Yeah. Okay. The other marionette who's standing. However, they. To be fair, they cannot see the dome, as it were. A wall of force is technically yeah. invisible. No, no, no. Uh, they, they are automatons, so we will go with the appropriate intellect. Although they have been engineered by none other than Morneth, a self-proclaimed intellectual and rock star. I need to get closer. So, this marionette is hitting Rogar... Uh, for... what is it? It's 33, but, um, Corin, could you explain to me what's happening now? Am I hitting some hardness there? Yeah, the, uh, wall, it's a... basically a hard, invisible surface, like the blade will strike the wall. Um, it has a hardness of 30 and 300 hit points, so hardness basically means it ignores the first 30 points of physical and energy damage before doing hit points, so if you know, they strike the wall, it still might start doing damage. Um, hitting it for 31 slashing damage. So yeah, it'll, it is now down to... 199 hit points. All right. Would you mind? Damn. Would you mind tracking uh, that damage uh, as I attack the wall? I. Right. So that's a great spell. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, again, Corin is full of surprises with these kind of things. It's like he has a. He is a little bit like Merlin at this stage. Um. Uh, that 
the thing with like wizards and stuff. Like it may seem like you know you're a little sparse on class features at times, although the magic hacks in this game are pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Destry, uh, you've read your paper. You have eaten your goulash. Um, you um, finished you? your safe travel um, pumpkin juice and. <laughs> You are outside of the tavern. Uh, you got the coordinates from Corin, and you know that it's going to be quite a long walk, about three hours. However, as you look around you, you cannot help but notice that the Sagestone Circles have these various channels made by Chronomagique. And every once in a while, you notice that there are essentially space whales docking the place. And you see a dock specifically for these uh, space whales, uh, clearly meant for transport in and around the academy. You do note, however, that it would be difficult to alter the route, because there's like a ferryman atop these space whales, and they often neglect desires to go outside of the academy uh, property. But maybe you can, uh, you can influence them somehow. What do you do? Careful. Uh, well, I just run up to uh, one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I try to convince them to take me there. So, uh, excuse me, I need a uh, fast taxi ride to about this valley. Can you uh, help me out? A night wizard stands in front of you, and you can know that he is a night wizard. This is the sort of armor that most of the night wizards in the valley don. Uh, and he says, uh, Greetings! I am Larissoi, deacon of the Deep Rot Candle. You may enter, but first, I must anoint you with the three humiliations. Would you allow me to do so? I don't have. Well, or there are other taxi drivers around that are not uh, night wizards. <laughs> and he keeps on laughing for a uncomfortable amount of time, and then he there stops what? and he says, "No." What? Just get going. I have no time for this. All right, I'll be quick. And he gets out a flask of uh, what appears to be oil. He uh, uh, puts a little um, uh, puts a little uh, of his um, fingers in it, and he throws it on you. And he says stuff like, um, "Technology defeats purpose." And then another a second time, technology cheats death. And then he puts it again, and he casts on you. Technology disrupts disrupts the song. Please, we must go. And he steps atop this giant space whale, and uh, you know, just because of your Merc stories, that these are rare creatures, and. Even though it looks like this night wizard has tamed them, you know that these space whales merely just accept whatever is happening right now. Throw a uh, life science check. Oh, yeah. brilliant. Good job. So, these creatures are descendants of Omas. Uh, I think it's better for us, uh, uh, Karel, to refer to them as Umas, given that the word means something different for us. So, an Uma is technically a, a giant electrical current space whale, and this creature seems to be a, a, a sort of uh, domesticated, smaller form of these giant creatures. Uh, you get atop, you have your gun with you, uh, your gear, 
and you sit on the bench, and La Ressoir, uh will guide you towards the place, and on your next turn, he will tell you a little story, and you will arrive. Is there anything else you want to do before I move on the turn order? Uh, well, just to be clear, I did bring the dog, I assume? Yes, was with me, right? I, I assumed that as well, yeah. 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 Oh, and the funny thing is, uh, Destry, as the dog uh, uh, approaches the space wheel, he also gets the oil on him, and um, even though he has a lot of technology on his back, he looks up at Lavissois, and he does a little bow, and he walks left and right, and the, uh, the uh, Lavissois sort of bows in front of him, and as he walks atop the space whale, he does the same with the space whale, and you hear this beautiful song coming out of this creature. I will uh, share the link with you. You can check it out on uh, uh, on YouTube or whatever. Uh, I don't know the names of these. Just to be clear, I did bring the dog, I assume? Yes. Was... And just as well... Imagine, like the wall, kind of like... Pulsing. Hey, um, when I got creative, I actually made my first dungeon synth song based on these space whales. And I'm gonna play it for you right now. Uh, yeah, I think that might be nice. Hold up. Let's see here. I think it's here. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Buddy, that was my first dungeon synth song ever. I created it based on that D&D episode you're just listening to. Like where they strike, like you could kind of yeah. see the surface at every every hit, like that magical ripple, like a uh, Phantom Menace. Uh... So, and I'm hitting 42 on the second one. I was thinking Phantom Menace when the gu with the Gungan War, when they have those purple shields. Yeah. So that was 42 damage uh, on the wall. Uh, for it. Rogar, a strange situation for you. What do you do? You're inside what appears to be a shield. Uh, what are you going to do? Yes. Um, is it? Can one attack from uh, inside the the bubble? Is it still possible? Or no, you're basically in the same. That's kind of the downside. Ah, so basically, I'm just staying put right now. 
Yeah, for a moment. Okay. Uh, well, sending away Tiamat for starters. Alright. So, can Tiamat take a guarded step? A companion? Uh, or is that just player characters? Sort of saying. Right. Uh, I think you probably want to do a draw, which you should be able to do, which is yeah. moving at your speed, but not of, not provoke an attack of opportunity from the square you leave. Exactly. That's. I yeah. don't know the names of these move maneuvers, but yes, exactly that one. Yeah, you should be able to do that. Everyone okay. can do that. Okay. Cool. So Tiamat scarily scurries away. Yep. And, yeah, after that, I guess Rogar is just saying put, and as he's staying in this bubble, he just yells back to uh, Corin or Geldor. Thank you, honorable wizard. <laughs> That sucked. Uh, honor, friend. Galdor slash Corin, you stand atop the Cyphernauticum factory. What are you doing? I am going to, quite similarly to my last turn, flash back in Have a good one. within the bubble right next to Rogar. It's a little cramped, kind of in his personal space, but that is more his problem than mine. Um, and rather than the usual way Corrin goes about casting spells, you just kind of see like the traditional wizardly way and the hand glows with magical energy and I touch your armor chest and give you DR10. Nice! Hello. See you around. Safe travels. And that will be me turn for for now. So, you flesh teleported in front of him and you touched his chest. Yeah. So, the where would the token be then? Uh, it'll be like right on top of him. I just didn't put it in there. So, cuz sometimes when I put my token on top of another player character's then mine disappears beneath it. So, I just ah. don't want to be able to move my not move myself out. Yeah, sure. All right, we get it, I think. So, uh, I am it doesn't I'm like wherever yeah. In there. Somewhere. Also protected by your own manufactured force field. Yeah, let's we'll do it. Okay, I'm on top of him. It's fine. Okay. So. Marionette soldiers continue attacking, though. Uh, at the force field. Thirty-three. You're basically you're just roll, just telling me damage now at this point. Yeah, right? I'm sorry. I'm yeah, that's slashing damage. Thirty-three. All right, just yeah, just give 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 each of them. And one more time from this guy, I'm doing 33 slashing damage on your wall. Uh, you'll you'll manage. So Destry, um, it's quite a sight that you see. On your right, you see the Academy of Mariabok, and uh, to your left, you you see the Lodestar. Uh, what's most apparent right here is that you actually see a streak 
of these crystallized mushrooms being uh, planted not too long ago and having a path towards the academy. How are and you? as you look see? at the academy, you also see that a lot of these mushrooms have taken the their spores inside the facility. Um, as you look up in the distance, you notice that this is almost like a pocket dimension within the valley, protected from whatever technological advancements there are outside of um, these sage stone circles. Um, all around you, far in the distance, you see uh, actually the opposite of black holes. You see Be careful. strange white holes. And um, as you look at them, Lerison, Lerisoa, excuse me, says um, to enter the academy, Good day to most you. people enter through the black holes in the sage stone circles. It appears you have traveled by means of the mycelic, uh, myce uh, mycloid uh, crystarium. He asks you, are you just a mercenary or are you attempting to be Marcus Knotter? Right. Uh, I'm a mercenary. Right. <laughs> right. Then let me introduce myself. I am not Lerisoa. Nay, I am Marcus Knotter. And he stands atop, and he has his foot, like, up uh, on the back of the uh, space whale, like a captain, you know, uh, like a sea captain. And... Uh, the whale is just sort of floating and doing his nice noises. And he says, I am Marcus Grotter. I do not wish to be Lerisoa anymore. What? And that was today's episode. It's funny how these things are sort of coming together at this stage. Uh, I have fun. I think I'll be back quite soon, guys. Um, leave a like. Um, or not. Whatever. Maybe you're one of those guys who doesn't want to like everything. Maybe you just want something in the background, for fuck's sake. I don't have to like it. That's fine, too. Yeah, man. That's fine, too. Also, make sure you give yourself some time, some relaxation. I just took an hour of my day to do this. Um, make sure you take care of yourself, yeah? <laughs> Alright. I'm off. Bye. Zia, later. Uh-huh.